Charlie Doomer. Seeing the absolute disaster that the woke Disney version of Doctor Who has been so far, Russell T. Davis, showrunner of the series, seems to be getting increasingly worried, while also admitting that riling up and dividing the fan base was actually their plan all along. According to him, if things are polarizing, they are in a healthy position. And things are definitely polarizing. But let's see just how healthy their position looks. Between introducing the concept of bi-generation, revealing that the issue of the human Time Lord Metacrisis energies could be solved simply by being a woman, and his confirming that the concept of the timeless child is still very much in play, Russell T. Davies' latest run in charge of Doctor Who has already seen him make a number of controversial changes to the series' long-established canon. And while fans may not be too happy about his choices, the showrunner is standing by each and every one of them. Yes, we know. That's exactly the problem. And it makes you wonder, why are they doing it if they even acknowledge that everyone hates it? Aren't they supposed to give the fans and the audience in general what they want? Why are they deliberately undermining their own show? Anyway, then they say, Davies made clear his commitment to his creative vision, for better or worse. During a May 2024 interview given to The Verge's Charles Pullum Moore in promotion of the British sci-fi show's then-upcoming Series 14 premiere, met with the opening inquiry from his host. What about stepping into this new era of Doctor Who and taking really big swings felt risky to you? Davies asserted, it never feels risky to be, to be honest. I'm the man who created Queer as Folk in 1999. I live off risk, said the returning showrunner. Wait, so was it not risky? Or do you live off risk? You really can't have it both ways, I'm afraid. Then he says, I love it! I think we can be unfair to fans sometimes when we say the viewers are polarized, because there's nothing fans love more than a good debate. Actually, there is one thing. It's called good entertainment. You causing division among them just means that you're changing the show in a way that became very unappealing to a large part of your existing fan base, which you are therefore losing. Just go and talk to a bunch of football fans. There are no football fans saying, our team is perfect, we're really happy, and we've got nothing to say. Maybe, but they also aren't saying that their team has been turned into absolute shite, and they no longer want to have anything to do with it which is how so many of your fans feel about your show. They're all arguing all the time, and that's just what fandom is. Yes, except they're normally arguing about minor details, whereas in your show's case, they are arguing about whether it's watchable at all. If things are polarizing, I think we're in a healthy position, but I also think we sometimes overstate the importance of discourse on Twitter. Of course you do, because it's no longer a leftist platform. When it was... You were all over it like flies over a pile of turd. Turning his attentions to his latest changes to the series canon, Davies then continued, That said, I'm a fan, and I'm not dismissing fan opinions at all. But I think that as long as I personally can find a good emotional path through the story, it's in a good place. I see. So it's all about the showrunner's emotions. And as long as those are doing fine, nothing else really matters, including the satisfaction of the audience. I'm not quite sure where I am when I'm talking about the history of the legend of the timeless child, he affirmed. That actually doesn't mean much to me. But if you say to me, the doctor is a foundling, an orphan who doesn't know who his parents are, that sells it to me. Suddenly, I can listen to that man and empathize with him. That's when you know you're in really rich emotional territory, and I think that's where Doctor Who is right now. Yes, and that's exactly the problem. It's become an emotional coping session for the mentally unstable. Unfortunately for Davies, while such an emotionally rich territory may be where Doctor Who is right now, its viewers have not chosen to come along for the trip. Per reported numbers, the first two episodes of Doctor Who's latest series debuted to staggeringly low numbers, pulling in just 2.6 million viewers overnight for its first adventure, Space Babies, and 2.2 million for The Devil's Court, the lowest ever in the series' history. Yes, and it's not getting any better. Not until they start focusing on telling good stories again instead of pushing identity politics. By comparison, current lead and Cootie got was first full episode as the 15th Doctor and the last Doctor Who adventure prior to the debut of Series 14, 
the 60th anniversary special, The Church on Ruby Road, managed to pull in an overnight total of roughly 4.73 million viewers. The same thing happened to Jodie Whittaker's first episode, who was the first ever female doctor. That episode was watched by everyone since it was something new, and people wanted to see how it goes. But then they realized it's garbage, and that's when the numbers started to freefall. Only time will tell if the next new episode of Doctor Who, Boom, will fare any better when it premieres on May 18th. Well, time has spoken, and it looks like it didn't. It was definitely less unwatchable than the previous two episodes. But that's not saying much, since the bar was already set extremely low. Anyway, if you would like to get some sweet perks on this channel, check out my subscribe star page and pick a tier you like. Also, make sure to check out the other videos I have here. And I will see you in the next one.